So in the first question, a student investigates the stretching of a spring. So in student investigating how the stretching of a spring is affected by adding a load. So figure one, for 1.1 shows apparatus. A student is having a clamp stand, a spring is there, and a meter rule or a meter scale is there, which is having the marking. The meter rule is clamped in a position near to spring. Write down the scale reading in a millimeter from the meter rule at the top and the bottom of a spring. So what is the reading at the top of the spring? What is this value? Remember the zero is at the top, like zero is there at the top and 100 is there at the bottom. So what is this value? The first value, the reading at the top and the reading at the bottom. So reading at the top, as you can see, like it is before 44, and there are 10 lines are there, so it is actually 43.9. So this value is 43.9 because after 43.9, there will be 44, then 44.1, 44 44.2, 3, 4, 44.5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 45. Then 45.1, 45.2, 45.3, and 45.4. So 45.4 is the bottom reading. So in the first part, they ask, state the reading at the top and the bottom. So top reading is, is in millimeter as you can see, this is what we did in centimeter, but we have to convert into millimeter. So if the first reading was 43.9 centimeter and the second reading is 45. 4 centimeter, but we have to convert into millimeter. So to convert centimeter into millimeter, we multiply by 10. When we multiply these values by 10, this will come out as 439 millimeter, and this will be 454 millimeters. So these are the readings in millimeters. Then use the two readings, calculate the length of a spring and record that L0 or L0 in table 1.1. So how we can use this to determine the length of a spring. So this is the length of a spring. It is starting from, it is starting from 43.9 43 or 439 millimeter and it is ending at 454 millimeter. So how much is the reading, uh, like the length of this spring, which we call L0 or L0. So we just take a difference of the two values. So 454 minus 439 will give us this reading, which is coming out as 454 minus 439. equals to 15 millimeter. And we have to complete there, write this, the length, as I mentioned in table 1.1. So this is table 1.1. When there is no load, what is the length? That was 15 millimeter. So here we have to write. The next part, in part B, the student suspended the load 0.2 from a spring and he record the new length in table 1.1 and use the equation that extension or E is equals to L minus L naught means the measured length minus the original length will give us the extension. So complete the extension column heading. So what will be the unit column heading means the unit. So what will the unit if length is there in millimeter, extension is also in millimeter. So this extension will be there in millimeter as well. This already we calculated, 15 was there. The student repeat the procedure with, with load 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and one. He records the reading in the table. So how much is this extension? What will be extension? 
if the when there was no load attached the length was of the spring was 15 when we attach a load of 0.2 the length is 17 how much it extend or how much increase in length that is 2 so the readings of load and extension because we need this to plot a graph between load and extension load is 0 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. And the extension is how much? That is 0, 2, 5, 8, 10, and 30. So we will use these values to plot a graph. So they mentioned plot a graph for extension on y-axis. So we have to plot extension on y-axis and load on x-axis. When you are plotting a graph, try to use 70% of your graph paper. So extension is there on y-axis and load is there on x-axis. So the load is there on x-axis and label the axis, how you label because we are plotting load and what is the unit of a load that is in Newton. And on y-axis, We are plotting the extension. So extension we are representing by E and what is the unit of extension that is in millimeter. Now the smallest or the minimum value of the load is zero and the maximum value is one. So we have to divide our scale that from zero to one. So if it start with here, this is zero. If I say zero point, this is five boxes equals to 0 0.1. So this will be 0 0.2, this will be 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, and then 1.2. It means each, like five boxes on x-axis equals 2.1. Same thing for extension, the smallest value of extension is 0 and the highest is 30. So we have to divide the scale so that we can have, so if I say this is five, 10 boxes equal, 20 boxes equal, like 10 boxes equals to, here I'm selecting, so if this was two, four, six, eight, ten. 10, 12 and then there is another box up is there so I can complete this to 14. So on x axis 13 I did not write I can write uh, up because there's a space available so 10 boxes equals to 2 so each box is equals to 0 0.2 now we plot the result Try to use thin lines or use a small spots or dots to represent uh, the points on the graph. So when load is zero, extension is also zero. So when load is zero, extension is zero. That is our first point. When load is 0 0.2, extension is two. So load is 0 0.2, extension is two. When load is 0 0.4, extension is five. So between four and six, I will have five. So this will be five. 0 0.6 and eight. So 0 0.6 and eight. Then 0 0.8 and 10, 0 0.8 and 10. And one and 13. So 13 is somewhat, it, it will be a bit up somewhat here. Now, when we plot a graph, because our first point is zero, zero, zero comma zero. So we'll draw a best fit straight line. And we know force and extension are directly proportional. What is the meaning of a best fit straight line? The number of the points above the line and the number of the points below the line should be same or equal. That's a best fit straight line. As you can see here, I have one point above the line and I have one point below the line. And approximately all the points, because this point will be 13 somewhat here. So this will be the graph for force and extension or load it extension because they are directly proportional so it should be a straight line don't try to join the points like this is a common mistake 
that student try to join the points of free hand that is wrong free hand is only acceptable if you are plotting a curve but if two quantities are directly proportional there will always be a straight line passing through a region so we'll try try to draw a best fit straight line which is having maximum number of so we plot a best fit straight line from these points after plotting force and extension so try to utilize 70% of a graph paper like on x axis we as i mentioned we have to take load on y axis we have to take extension so load is there on x axis and extension is there on y axis and we have plotted a graph which was a best fit straight line maximum points were there on the line when you plot a graph use thin lines in part d figure 1.2 shows unstretched spring and the spring with a load on a figure 1.2 show clearly distances l not l not means the length of is unstretched spring l the total length of a spring and e the extension so use a screen annotation first to mark l not what will be l not length of a spring you can use a screen annotation yeah that's good that's correct rafi so from bottom from the top ring to the bottom ring that is we call l not or l zero that is length of or lo you can say original length what about the length of a stretch spring that is called l what are the labels for length of a stretch so that is extension l is the length of extension means increase in length l is the total length of a spring which is loaded so if we need the total length of a spring which is loaded so again we will take this is the length of a loaded spring we represent by l and how much is the extension extension means increase in length so for extension we will draw a line which shows that this is a increase in length is it uh, clear discussion about uh, extension